Good day everyone, my name is Muhammad Dafa Falvrahman from Sriwijaya State Polytechnic. On this occasion, I would like to deliver my presentation in the form of an informative speech on the topic Green Economy for Indonesia's Resilience Post-Pandemic Recovery to achieve Sustainable Development Goals number 11 indicated by Direct Disaster Economy Class number 12 indicated by Sustainable Public Procurement Policies and Action Plans and number 15 indicated by Sustainable Forest Management. Under this topic, I would like to inform you about what Indonesia look like as a developing country, what problems we are facing now, and how the green economy become the best solution for Indonesia's resilience post-pandemic recovery. It is well known that Indonesia is tremendously rich in natural resources. The terrestrial and marine biodiversity contributes significantly to the development of our country. The tropical forest, as a part of terrestrial biodiversity, contains thousands of plants and animals that make Indonesia famous as the lung of the world. As a developing country, the development of every sector can be vividly witnessed. It grows rapidly in terms of economy and social life. Hence, the lifestyle of modern society has made a very ex exploitative development of natural resources life-threatening. Development, focused on proven production growth, leads to economic recovery but fails on the social and environmental side. As a result, there are an increasing number of gas emissions and loss of forest area as well as a variety of species extinction. Nowadays, the mindset of people in general is more favorable for the conversion of forest into land mines, plantation of oil resources, or recklessly harvested logs for sale. They lack awareness of the sustainability of the forest. This led Indonesia to become a fast lost forest country. The worrying deforestation also affects the people who live around the forest itself and use it as a source of livelihood. Indonesia's population living in the villages and around the forest is approximately 50 million people, of which 10 million of them are poor, given the threats arising from deforestation. Certainly, the urgency to prevent the destruction of Indonesia forests is unavoidable. Through the clean energy system, we will understand what a healthy ecosystem and economy are, unless the growth itself cannot be enjoyed and there will be damage caused by the unavailability of adequate resources. Addressing this matter, the solution for the preservation of forests that can contribute to the economy is of utmost necessity. The concept of a green economy is a sustainable economic activity and utilization of natural resources that is carried out without damaging the environment. One application of the green economy effort to reduce deforestation is the use of non-timber forest products. Indonesia forest biodiversity is enormous potential to save a great addition to the utilization of harvested wood. In addition, the Indonesian government now seriously implements the reducing emission from deforestation and forest degradation or REDD Plus program. The role of conservation, sustainable management of forests, and enhancement of carbon stock are included in the program. The form of a green economy is not just limited for the forest sector. Commitment to developing clean and eco-friendly energy is also another applicable sector in Indonesia. The development of such energy is high potential for Indonesia is rich in natural resources such as sun, wind, hydro, and geothermal energy. Nonetheless, those potential energies are yet untapped. In conclusion, a green economy will be the answer and become a priceless solution to the interdependence between the economy and the ecosystem, as well as the negative impact of economic activity. It is not only about business as usual, but also prosperity and well-being community to reduce the risks of ecological damage. The concept of a green economy is real way out, a bridge between broad development, social justice, and eco-friendly natural resources. It can be implemented in the direction of development of pro-poor, pro-job, pro-growth, and pro-environment. Above all, this still requires the cooperation of all parties to bolster sustainable development into everyday life in the context of the state throughout the country and around the resources of people's life to achieve a resilient post-pandemic recovery.